Hi, very good morning. I am Dr. Janak Patel, MD, General Physician. All my video lectures are mainly for educative purpose for fourth year students. In continuity with the previous lecture, this is one short topic which I would like to cover up. Very frequently can be asked as a short note in theory can be asked in your oral and very very commonly you will come across in your everyday practice the person who has got incoordination or we call imbalance or person is having ataxia and you demonstrate one sign we call as a rhombus sign so we'll be talking in relation to rhombus sign or rhombus test So rhombus test or rhombus sign. So that is the most common test, one of the tests very frequently done to find out if a person is having any problem with maintenance of balance or we call equilibrium or in coordination. We call total body coordination. And you want to demonstrate that is there any problem with that now before we go into that we should understand that there are three inputs visual input vestibular input and proprioceptive input which will go to cerebral cortex brainstem and to the cerebellum this is in short we are doing and that will result into maintenance of posture we call vestibular ocular reflexes that will be done by these three structures that is cerebral cortex brain stem and cerebellum and input is given by eye by vestibular apparatus and regarding proprioceptive sensation from lower limb we call sensory input and that will take part in maintenance of posture and equilibrium posture control balance and we call balance or equilibrium so input will be from eye skin joint muscles and vestibular apparatus and they will go to vestibular nucleus cerebellum and then finally they will give output to motor neurons of trunk and muscles which will take part in maintenance of equilibrium and posture it will take part in perception of motion and orientation and also it will take part in what we call as a vestibulo ocular reflexes so you can see here this is disturbances in equilibrium here again you can see that so vestibular nucleus will receive input from vestibular apparatus vision proprioceptive sensation tactile information auditory information etc and then it will share with cortex which we call as extraocular nuclei and medial longitudinal fascicle which will take part in vestibulo ocular reflexes it will be connected to the superior colliculus which will take part in head movements vestibular nuclei is connected to the spinal cord by a reticular formation etc which takes part in posture of head and body also it will take part in nausea vomiting and may also end up with altered consciousness and it is connected to cerebellum which will take part in maintenance of balance as well as tone and also it will also take part in equilibrium so we ask the person to do a test and that is we call as rhombus test what we ask in a person to do in a rhombus test first step person is supposed to stand on a hard floor so floor should be hard two legs together 
with eye open and either arm are by the side or arm are on the chest if person is able to maintain balance now he is asked to close the eye and look for if there is any imbalance these are the complete steps of rombok test or we call rombok sign and while doing this test you must stand by the side of the person so that he doesn't get a fall and if he is having imbalance or sway he does not get injury due to fall so that should be kept in mind so test is to check neurological function of balance and this is being maintained by vestibular apparatus sensory input and cerebellum so these three things are being checked by doing rombok test also it is a one of the very common test which is being done if any person who is under the effect of alcohol or drug during driving or during neurological decompression sickness this is the test which is very frequently being done so it is a sign to find out any disturbances in maintenance of balance and we have already shown you before that there are three main structure which takes part in maintenance of balance that is cerebellum vestibular apparatus and sensory input from lower limb that is posterior column so with eye open on a firm surface two legs together arm by the side then with eye closed now you can make it little more sensitive by standing on a foam so that is a soft material on which the person is standing and is repeating the same with eye open two legs together arm by the side and then with the eye closed so when you are doing on a foam you are making it more sensitive and you are reducing the sensory input so in a person with a sensory ataxia the person will start swaying which will not be increased in a person with cerebellar ataxia or with vestibular because on a foam it will not make much changes so this particular test is very frequently utilized to detect sensory disturbances or sensory ataxia so position of the feet the person will be standing in a case of cerebellar usually he will stand on a broad base very commonly that is a wrong technique and chin is low that is also wrong a person is standing like this with lumbar lordosis that is also wrong person is supposed to stand straight with two legs together and head straight arm by the side that is the best position and first step i open second step i closed and during that you have to look at whether the person has got tendency to fall and if his tendency to fall on one side which side he is falling that should be observed or person is falling on either right or left or he is having tendency to fall back if he is falling on the right side probably he may be having lesion of right cerebellar hemisphere and if he tends to fall backward it will be a midline or a vermis lesion so that should be observed so person stands with feet both feet together first initially i open and he is standing on a hard floor then he closes the eye if everything is okay with eye open but sways with the eye closed then we'll call that as rombok test positive and this will be giving you an idea that person is having imbalance 
or person is having disturbances in maintenance of balance. So initially with eye open and then with eye closed. Now here if you see that arms are apart. Now if a person brings this arm together and now he starts swinging, again that is Rombach test positive. So now in a sensory ataxia, person will try to maintain the balance by eye open with little broad base and arm wide apart. He can maintain the balance. But as soon as he closes the eye, the visual input is stopped. There is already sensory input is not going. Now only cerebellar input is working. Only cerebellum is working. Person will start swaying and he will have a fall. That is very characteristic of sensory ataxia. While in cerebellar ataxia, cerebellum is the final organ which is going to maintain your balance. So whether with eye open or eye closed, person will have an imbalance. Whether with broad base or with both upper limb wide apart, whether with eye open or eye closed, he will sway. That is very characteristic of cerebellar ataxia. And in that, we don't require to do any test with foam. So do remember that. Or even if a person is able to maintain by standing on one limb, 100% person is not having cerebellar ataxia person is not having sensory ataxia. That is very easy. You can make it more sensitive by also doing certain other tests. So vestibular ataxia and cerebellar ataxia will be nearly similar presentation. Whether with eye open, with eye closed, it will remain nearly same. There will be not much amount of changes. Now here this is one word is being utilized, this is called modified Rombach test, where person is standing with two legs together on a hard object, with arm together, but projected forwards. And first initially with head steady, and then he moves the head backward. Now during this, you want to differentiate between vestibular ataxia. So if there is a vestibular ataxia, person will start swaying. And if you want to make out sensory, you just tap the person. And if a person gets tendency to fall because of eye closer and head extended back, that will make sensory ataxia prominent. This is labeled as modified Rombach test. There is one more name given to a test called tandem Rombach test. Now here the person was standing with two legs together, head in the center, arm moved forward, both arms are moved forward instead of by the side so that we can protect from a fall and then head is extended and you look for the ataxia. So you'll be able to differentiate to vestibular and sensory ataxia by giving a little stimulus that you are pushing little back. A person with sensory ataxia will have a tendency to fall. While here what is being done is in a normal Rombach test, what we are doing is we are asking the person to keep the two legs together, arm by the side or arm on the chest. And person is supposed to maintain the balance. But here, to increase the more sensitivity, then person is putting one leg in front of the other leg. That is called tandem. When he walks, we call tandem walking. But here, you put one leg in front of the other leg. You can see here. This is usually after traditional Rombach test. 
so if you are not able to get any finding in that traditional romberg test you can make that further more sensitive so if still person has got chance of imbalance and risk of fall then this procedure is being done and person is supposed to stand with such posture for 30 seconds with eye open and then 30 seconds with eye closed and if a person gets tendency to fall it will tell you that person has got chance of imbalance and risk of fall that is the tandem rombok test some person also use the word in this tandem sharpen rombok test and you instead of 30 second you can make it longer up to 1 minute so arm folded across the chest and eye closed for 1 minute person is supposed to maintain the balance so again you can see that one leg is in front this is tandem if you want to make it more sensitive with a you have to stand on the toe and maintain it for 30 seconds or stand on a hill and this is to increase your sensory findings that is on a foam these are all the different ways in which you can use to find out any imbalance or in coordination this is on the toes this is on the hill and this is called tandem so tandem rombok test or you can use it person can stand on a hill person can stand on a toe or you ask the person to stand on a foam piece of a foam and another way which is ent person ent surgeons they do very commonly with the arm spread out and if the person has got tendency to fall on one side to find out the sensitivity of the vestibular apparatus involvement and this is one of the test and when the person standing with the two legs together with arm forward and he walks at that stage only he is walking and that is called untenberg test attenberger test and this is to find out vestibular disturbances or vestibular ataxia also there is one more name given to this is mittel mayer test mittel mayer test this is a difference between cerebellar ataxia and sensory ataxia cerebellar ataxia will usually stand with a wide base in a sensory person will be walking with narrow base but his eye will be glued to the ground he'll be using the visual input more the person will be swaying on both the sides or may even sway backward also while here the person will be regular with the path deviation rombok test will be very very commonly positive in a sensory ataxia and he will have a tendency to fall cerebellar ataxia in all possible whether with eye open or eye closed with a, with broad base or narrow base with arm by the side or arm wide open he will have a fall person will also be unsteady when he turns back in case of cerebellar ataxia postural instability will be much more affected in case of sensory ataxia as compared to cerebellar ataxia and person will have a more tendency to fall in a sensory rather than in a case of a cerebellar ataxia this will be some of the differences now here there is one video clip which i have gathered from youtube i am very much thankful to those people who has uploaded and you can see how the rombok test is being conducted is first initially explaining what is rombok test 
is an orthopedic test that you can do to check. Voice quality is little poor, but still, is a test that needs to while recording, the there was difficulty in recording. Also, you want to make sure that they're not wearing any type of ankle braces or ankle supports. And when you're doing this test, you want to stand close to the patient for safety. How exactly the Rombok test is being done, that is what he's explaining. would be an inability to hold the position while the patient is standing with their eyes open. Also, a positive test is when the, this is being performed with the eyes closed, is how much the patient sways back and forth, if there is an excessive amount of swaying, that is a positive test. If the patient shuffles their feet to catch themselves or if the patient loses their balance. Those are all positive tests that may show when the patient has their eyes closed. So you want to perform this test with the eyes open and then repeat it with the eyes closed. To perform Ron now he's demonstrating the Rombok test. Make sure that we are standing close to the patient in case they start to lose their balance and we can catch them. There's two ways to do this. First, you have to explain to the person what you are going to do. What you want to do is have the patient standing in good posture, no shoes. They're going to have their feet closed. He's standing on the hard floor. With their arms hanging down or their arms crossed. Arms on the chest. He's going to do with the arms crossed. Or you can keep arm by the side. You want to make sure two legs together. First, initially with eye open and then with eye closed. As long as they can, up to 30 seconds. You want to record how long that they can hold this position and we want to watch for swing. He is holding this position very well. If he starts to lose this position or if he steps And while doing this test, you have to stand by the side so that he doesn't get a fall and injury. Once you have completed the first part of the test, then you do the second part. You have the patient relax and you repeat the same procedure with their eyes closed. Again, we want to look for the patient, see if they're swaying. If, if the person doesn't sway, we say rhombic test negative. Go ahead and catch them and the test is done. You want to record the amount of time that they can hold this position up to 30 seconds. And then once you reach 30 seconds, the test is complete. If the test is positive, it can indicate ataxia from a dorsal column disorder. It can also indicate decreased proprioception and a deficiency of B12 or deficiency of vitamin E. This test, just like all other tests, need to be... Now here, there is a very nice demonstration of Rombok test as well as pronated drip which is very commonly seen in a cerebellar lesion. Now you can see that he is able to stand very nicely. Now, person is telling that he has got tendency to fall on one side. That is left side. See, two arms are stretched and I are closed. You can see the person is swaying. And simultaneously you can see that one arm, one arm is slowly going into pronated drift. Now there is a tendency to fall. This is rhombic taste positive. See that. Now this is a pronated drift, which is one of the finding in case of a cerebellar lesion. You will see that one arm will be slowly drooping down and there will be pronation. You can see there is a pronated drift on the left upper limb. You know this ends up on YouTube and you're okay with that? 
we, we won't have your name on it or anything like that. Okay, we'll, maybe they won't recognize me. <laughs> well, you know, as many people as there are. Yeah. Thank you very much for doing this. Here, you can see that there is very short clip showing you Rombak test, how it is doing. Stand here and with your eyes open straight ahead and I'm seeing if you can stand without swaying. And now I want you to continue to stand and close your eyes. This is Rombak okay. test. There is no swaying. So Rombak test is negative. Now, in, in, now in a standing posture at the same place, she is okay, walking. Now, I'm going to continue marching in place. This is called Mittel Mayer test. That's good. Now here, this is modified Romberg test. What a person is going to demonstrate. Dab with Romberg test. Would you stand First initially me, Romberg test and then met Put your feet modified together. Romberg test. And hands out so like standing so. on the now we're looking hard for floor, any imbalance problem. two legs together, so to arm stretch steady. forward. No movements of the hands, no swing of the body. This is the first part of Romberg. Now will you take your head back and look at the ceiling for me. See how she's still steady? That's the second part of Romberg. Now close your eyes for me. That's the third part of Romberg. Now I'm going to tap. Very good. Okay, now let's go back this was modified and Romberg the test. three parts of the Romberg test and what they mean. So now put your hands out like this. Now with the feet together and the hands out, if she sways back and forth, or in extreme cases she may fall, just like a sack of potatoes, that indicates a lesion in lesion. the cerebellum. Now, Deb, will you take your head back and look at the ceiling? Now, now if she starts to get dizzy in this position, sway, then this will be vestibular. That means we may have a lesion of the vestibular apparatus. And now, Deb, close your eyes for me. Now, with her eyes being closed, I'm going to tap her. Now, if you tap that if and if the person falls, position, which then did. that is and with her eyes closed, posterior column. that's looking for a lesion within the posterior columns. Because when we have her close her eyes, we take away her sense of position. And with that, therefore, we're checking proprioception. All right, now let's talk about how we would do it in our office. Deb, would you put your feet together, please? Now put your hands out like so. Now move your head back, look at the ceiling. Now close your eyes. Now I'm going to come in and tap. Good, thank you. That's the Romberg test. And as you noted, she was steady and had normal balance throughout. A note of caution. When you're performing the Romberg test on your patients, a true positive Romberg is where the patient may fall like a sack of potatoes when you have them put their arms out. So if you perform the test with a patient standing next to your examining table or next to a counter, when they fall, they could severely injure themselves. So put them in a place in your examining room where they are away from objects in case the patient... Now here you can see that person is standing with a broad base. And even while standing with a broad base, he has got tendency to fall. And with a narrow base, more tendency to fall. This will be very typical in case of a cerebellar ataxia and ear, the eye is open. So whether with broad base or with a narrow base, with eye open or eye closed, if a person is having tendency to fall, even with eye open, it will be more in favor of cerebellar ataxia. So I end my lecture here. I hope this lecture will be helpful to you. You will have very frequently a short note on Romberg test and very commonly in your everyday practice also someone will come with ataxia, imbalance. You will do this Romberg test and you will have to find out whether it is cerebellar, whether it is sensory or whether it is vestibular and this will be helpful to you to identify those. So do go through. If you find it is helpful to you, don't forget to press button like. Give your suggestions. You can subscribe and you can share with your friends also. See you in next lecture. Thank you very much for taking out time. I know that your time is very valuable and I appreciate that you have spent some of the time with me. See you in next lecture.